very close at our doors. Very, very close. I told you, darkness and light will walk together. You will not know that the person who has moved into the next house is one who has a relationship with demons. Because they look good, they speak well, they are very gentle, but yet their alignment is somewhere else. And you have to be so careful. Last year, I don't know whether you know, anybody knows Pastor Bernard Lee from Vancouver. He has a small church in Vancouver. And after we had finished preaching in a bigger church, uh, Pastor Bernard Lee asked me if I would come up to another place, a beautiful, where they have the winter sports. It's called a place called Whistler. And uh, give a small retreat for his little church. And I took them through the teachings of the divine council and every night in my little hotel room 20 people would jam pack the room and spend three hours of prayer to enter into the divine council and they had awesome experiences I remember three ladies who were lifted out from the coach and brought to the ground because when the prophets entered to meet with us many of us stood up out of respect for these holy people of God and they didn't stand and suddenly they felt a power of wind circle around their legs and just lift them off the couch and they were on the ground <laughs> but in one of those those nights the Lord gave me a very interesting experience now this is again another story on the power of the ages that we live in and this is something that he wants all of you to learn to walk into and to help bring your destiny closer. During one of those nights of prayer, I sensed my spirit being taken over the ocean and I understood it as the Pacific Ocean. And the Lord was with me this time. There was no angels. Just the Lord and myself, our, our spirits hovered over the Pacific Ocean. And when I looked at the ocean, it looked very angry. There were big waves. Boom. And the waves are getting higher. And then the Lord just asked me a question. Tell me how high do these things, do you think these waves are? I said, well, I don't know, Lord, but I think it looks like 10 meters. 10 meters high. How high will be 10 meters? Anybody has a guess? How many feet? 30 feet. 33 feet. I'm 5 feet 6 inches. So, six times my height will be roughly about that. So, think of where six times will go to. The waves are that high. And then the Lord told me, speak to the waves and say, calm down. And so I said, in the name of Jesus, calm down. You know, when Jesus is by your side, you have a lot of energy. Yeah. Because if anything goes wrong, he has to take charge. So, no problem. So, I just told the waves, calm down in the name of Jesus. You calm down. And right enough, those big angry waves and and gradually the sea got calm. And then it was over. And the people at three o'clock in the morning all went home. And I went home, I mean I went to sleep. And I got up next day and you know when you when you stay in the hotels they leave a newspaper on your door in the morning. I picked up that newspaper in the morning and I was just flicking through the news and there there was an article. Japan saved from the second tsunami. And the article read, uh, there were 10 meter high waves in the Pacific Ocean. But by the time they reached the shores of a particular place in Japan, it had fizzled down and gone to nothing. Hallelujah. And the Lord told me, cut that out and keep it as a testimony. You see, wherever the Lord has done something supernatural, it has borne itself out in the newspapers very, very quickly. Haven't you noticed that? Yeah. It is not a supernatural experience for yourself. It is a supernatural experience which is touching nations, the lives of thousands and thousands. 
and god is saying to each one of you here it is within your grasp the tools of heaven are right besides you take the effort and get going because that's your only tool that you will have against china or japan or america or russia or anybody else let it be that's your awesome powerful spiritual tool and that's why that wonderful quotation from 2 Corinthians 10 that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are mighty they can make waves 10 feet waves come down they can make nuclear facilities of 20 square miles turn to nothing in a few seconds because god is in it hallelujah thank you lord we well, have got three minutes and I'm not going to let it go. But I want you to stand up now. And I want you to do a prophetic declaration. We are going to declare God's word into the eight pillars of society around us. And as we say these scripture verses from Hebrews chapter 12, 26 to 29, we are going to ask the Lord that every idol in the religious, in the economic, in the governmental, in the entertainment, education, cultural, science and, te and technology and business, all idols in this arena will fall down. Amen. That it will set the people free to know their God and to walk by His covenant and by His calling. Okay, let's say the scripture together. It should be loud and if the spirit tells you you are saying this for the religious then you mention religious whatever aspect of the eight pillars of society that are there I can name them for you if you want them religious economic governmental entertainment education cultural science and technology and business so you choose any one and we are going to say this scripture that God will shake every idol and bring it down in Jesus mighty name okay let's get going together whose voice then shook the earth and now he has promised saying yet once more I will not only shake the earth but also the heavens and this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that have been made so that the things which cannot be shaken may remain therefore the Philippines is receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Lord, bring down the idols in every religious situation, every economic situation, every governmental situation. 
every entertainment industry every educational system every cultural group in our science and technology and in our business trade and commerce bring down the idols in Jesus name Amen 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 Good afternoon. Well, I would like to start with the verse Second Chronicles chapter twelve, verse thirty two. I would like that when all of us here goes home, when we go to our homes, what are we going to take with us? Ano yung babaunin natin dito sa ating convention na apat na araw? At yung baon na yon, papano natin kakainin yon? Ano yung gagawin natin para sa ganon matupad lahat yung mga pangako ng Panginoon? Are you with me? Okay. So, Second Chronicles uh, chapter 12, verse 32, it says, Of the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of the times, who knew, who know, or knew what Israel ought to do. No. So, let's stop there. No. So, I would like you to have a very good understanding of the times. Yung panahon na pinapag-usapan ng mga propeta, yung mga pangako ng Diyos, yung mga warnings sila, yung mga instructions sila. Kailangan maunawaan natin what is God doing today? What's happening today? Pastor Ed explained to us the, the conditions globally. What's happening in this world? We have to understand all of this. What's happening to our churches, our lives today? We have to, uh, to comprehend this fully. And if we have a clear understanding, hindi lang knowledge, hindi lang kaalaman, Kailangan maunawaan natin na mas malalim pa. No? If we understand the times, the Bible says, we will know what Israel ought to do. We will know what we should do. Amen? So, let's start with a summary of the prophecies. Summarize lang natin yung prophecies, yung mga promises ng Panginoon. So, there are the prophets has been coming here to the Philippines. They have been, they have been giving us some. They, they have been giving us many promises in the past. I will just run through it. No? Ito yung mga pangako from Bill Perry: the Philippines to be a burning bush for Asia. 1987 pa yan. God's 20-year plan for the Philippines to be a head nation by Bill Hammond, 1992, who's inulit po. Inulit po niya yan nung, nung 2003. Sinab, in, reiterate niya yung plano na yan. This is the year of destiny, of harvest, of restoration. Abu Bako. Next. God's glory. Again, the prophet is saying glory. A great revival coming to the Philippines by Abu Bako, Cindy Jacobs, Brian Bailey. Circa 2004, 2006, 2006. A prophetic people that will arise from the Philippines. Vincent Salvo Kumar, Sadhu San, Sundar Salvara. The promises for the last days, army of God. Powers of the age to come. Sadhu Sundar Sal, Salvara, 2011. The Philippines to be the prince nation of Asia. Robert Miss. Next. Actually, the prophecies has been... Yes, here... To be, recently, we've again heard our Bishop Dan Balais that the Philippines was formerly named Island of Lazarus until it was changed to the Philippines. Bishop Dan talked about the Almond Branch, which represents 
a resurrection like Lazarus. Lazarus was resurrected back to life. Then the boiling point, the boiling pot, that, you know, that judgments are coming to the nation. So we are, God has promises for us, but there are also judgments that are coming to the nation because God is purifying the nation. Pastor Ed talked about this earlier. Then Bishop Dan also talked about 490 years, our jubilee. This is our jubilee. We have still eight years to go in our jubilee. We are a favored nation. And in these 290 year, 490 years, what is God going to do? He will f- finish transgression. He will make an end to sin. He will make reconciliation, reconciliation for iniquity. He will bring in everlasting righteousness. He will unseal, after 490 years, He will unseal the vision and prophecy. And He will anoint the Most High. Itong gagawin ng Panginoon. Next. Then Chuck Pierce told us, I will, bring, I will begin to unlock the Philippines. Glory to be central in the Philippines. It will, Philippines will be a lighthouse in Asia, a Jerusalem of Asia. Jill Shan, hold it. Let's. So, let us sum up the prophecy. Sum up na natin yung, yung sinasabi ng mga propeta. No? May script po, po yan. Maraming detalya po ito. Kaya lang, I just wanted to give you an overview that yung sinasabi ni Bishop Dan Yung sinasabi po ni Chuck Pierce, yung sinasabi po ni Robert Meese, hindi po bago yan. Matagal na sinasabi po ito ng mga ibang propeta since in the 80s pa po, in the 90s, in, in the two, two, 2000, the prophets were saying these things over and over again. So let us, let us summarize it all. Can we have the, the slide on the summing up of the prophecies? So, ano po ang summing up ng mga prophecies? What does God want to do for the Philippines? First, God is saying we have been dead to sin. The Philippines is like a basket case. It's a very corrupt nation. Many have lost hope for this nation. It is like we have been dead to sin, but we are being made alive to, in righteousness. Amen? Gagawin tayo ng righteous ng Panginoon. Do you believe that? Next. This is the season that it will happen. This is the moment. God will do it. Next. It's a fulfillment of Daniel 9.24. 20, God said He will bring in everlasting righteousness. Alam po ninyo, righteousness is very important because God cannot bless us if we are not a righteous nation. We have to understand that. The only way for God to bless us is we have to be a righteous nation. So after, so with the righteous, how will God bring about righteousness? God will cause a revival to come to this nation. Amen? Then, with the righteousness, blessings will flow. Abundance, we will be a head nation. And, he will, and we will bring the gospel of the kingdom to the nations. And lastly, we will disciple nations. Ang ganda ng mga pangako, no? But with every promise, there is responsibility. Paano kaya mangyayari itong mga pangako na to? Kailangan natin maunawaan. We have to understand no, prophecy. Because prophecy are promises of God. But there are also instructions with prophecy. There are also warnings that goes with prophecy. Tingnan po natin yung kwento ni Jonah. Yung buhay ni Jonah. Pag-aralan natin. Unawaan po natin yung nangyari kay Jonah. So what happened to Jonah? Let's go to Jonah chapter 3. Let's read. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day 
walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So Jonah had the prophecy from the Lord. Forty days, wawasaki ng Panginoon ang Nineveh. Hindi magandang prophecy yun, no? Lahat ng mga prophecy sa Pilipinas, maganda. But dito sa Ninive, pangit. No? Let's continue to read. And he caused the king, and he caused it to be, the king proclaimed and published throughout Ninive by decree of the king and his nobles saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yet, let every man turn from his evil way and from the violence that, it, that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that, he may not, that we may not perish? So, anong ginawa ng Ninive when they heard the prophecy of destruction? The, the king heard about it. So, the king issued a decree. So every man, including the animals, pati mga hayop, what did they do? They fasted. They prayed. And after fasting and praying, what happened? Sabi po rito, no, let every, everyone turn from his evil ways and from the violence that is in his hands. So we were, we are, why did they pray and fasted? They repented. This is what God is asking the Philippines to do. This is our main work. Hello? God wants the Philippines to turn, to turn away from our wickedness to righteousness. Gusto niya yung Yung mga Pilipino from practicing idolatry, maging worshippers of the one true God. From being immoral, He wants us to be moral. From being corrupt, He wants us to, to be good governance. From being greedy, He wants us to share our wealth. From, from being unrighteous, He wants us to be righteous. From being violent, He wants us to be meek. Are you understanding this? Ito yung, ito yung gusto gawin ng Diyos. The, the Lord wants a righteous nation. Maraming bansa na prosperous. Kaya lang ang prosperity nila hindi righteous. Corrupt pa rin yung mga sobrang ubo ng korap yung mga bansa na yan. They're prosperous, but they're korap. But it will not be so with, with the Philippines. God is looking, is desiring to have a nation that is righteous. Can it be done? Can it be done? It Ninive turned. What happened? Let's read the conclusion. Then God saw their works, that they have turned from their evil ways. And God relented from the disaster that He said He would bring upon them. And He did not do it. So pwede palang ano, baguhin ang puso ng Panginoon. Amen? How did, how, did, how did they change the heart of God? They prayed. They fasted. How can, we, how can we change the heart of man? Yung taong nabubuhay sa kadiliman, yung taong nabubuhay sa immorality, yung sakim, yung greedy, yung, yung, yung korap, yung idolater, how do we change the heart of people? Impossible yan, di ba? Kaya ba natin baguhin yung kapwa natin? Yes or no? 
No, hindi natin kaya. It needs an act of God. We have to pray. That's why we need to pray. The Lord said that He will send the Holy Spirit to convict us of what? Of sin? Of righteousness? And judgment? Let's have that verse up here for, for a moment. He will pour out the Holy Spirit. It's an act of God. Nineveh prayed and fasted and they were able to move the heart of God to relent because God saw that they turned from their evil ways. Are we willing to pray and fast for this nation? Unceasingly. Wala nang gusto ah. <laughs> gusto lang ninyo one time para McDonald's, fast food. Isang iglap, kuha na ninyo agad yung blessing. Hindi pwede yun. We have to pray and fast unceasingly. The prophet is saying, this is the moment. This is the moment. Anong ibig sabihin ng moment? Alam po ninyo, ang dating sa akin ng moment, parang boiling point eh. Parang nag, nagpapakulo tayo ng tubig. Kailangan yung tubig dumating sa isang temperatura na 100 degrees, yung liquid magiging vapor. That moment is just around the corner. Yan ang sinasabi ng propeta eh. We have to continue praying and praying and praying and fasting and crying out to the Lord and repenting and asking the Lord, Lord, forgive our people. We are a corrupt generation. We have practiced idolatry. Ano yung, ano yung sinabi ng Panginoon? Doon sa 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and forgive their sins and heal their, heal their land. So who is the people of God? We. We are the people of God, right? So we need to humble ourselves. Right? We need to pray. We have to seek the face of God. And we have to purify our lives. God will not hear our prayer if we, don't, if we will not live pure it pure, we will not have pure lives. Who can stand in the holy hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Then what will God do? No? Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. It will be God who will heal us. It will be God who will give us His grace to transform this nation from wickedness to righteousness. Amen? I tell you this. The Philippines will be the first nation that, is a, that will enjoy righteous prosperity all over the world. First nation. No nation in this world has righteous prosperity. All the nations, all the, all the first world nations, what did they do? They exploited the whole world. They exploited the poor countries like us. What does God want to do? What are the prophets saying? What is spiritual Israel? What is prince nation? What is Jerusalem of Asia? What does that mean? Let's understand this. It means that God wants a nation that represents His kingdom in heaven. Naalala ba ninyo yung your kingdom come, your will on earth as it is in heaven. God wants the Philippines to be a pattern of His kingdom in heaven. God desires